as we take a look at the Lime Hall starting lineup, Jaheim Williams is between the sticks. The aforementioned Damani Sewell, the captain, is a part of a back four, which includes uh, Jay Anderson, Kevin Graham, and Dario Stewart. In the middle of the park, the number 15, Imani Beckford on the left, and Carlos Campbell, their dangerous number 10, holding the fort in the middle of the park, Ron Sewell. Uh, Sewell, of course, the brother of Damani, Shaquille Kane also there as well, and Aaron Elliott will play behind uh, Ronald uh, Brown, their number nine. Well, it's Lime out here as a new team. We'll wait to see what they have, but they will play a, a 4 2 3 1 formation. Uh, we got that word, and it's going to be interesting to see how that middle three of Kane, Elliott, and Sewell match up. William Ferreira, one of uh, three Brazilians in the starting lineup for Montego Bay United. He's between the sticks. In front of him, Lucas Lima Correa, the other Brazilian at centre back, and uh, part of the back four, uh, which includes Nicholas Lawrence, Odin Nish, and Viale Matolola. Uh, in the middle of the park, the number 10, a Brazilian as well, Ferreira, alongside Ronaldo Wellington and uh, the captain, Navon Turner. And up top on the left, Amal Nugent Hudson. On the right, Shaquille West. Down the middle, Siobhan McDonald, the former Clarendon College player, still looking for his first goal in the Jamaica Premier League. Well, we hope that McDonald will be down the middle. They've listed him as a striker. And we look at Nish, who is normally up front, listed as a centre. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here, Montego Bay United with a couple of opportunities. Turner always with a dangerous right foot, sending that one in. And Jaheim Williams was good between the six uh, for Lime Hall. And then an opportunity here, Hudson. And then West was trying to get in there, unable to, to really let fly. And then Ferreira with an effort, one of five shots to have been blocked and then the resulting effort uh, forced to save from Williams. And then this one from some way out from Kane and no issues there by for Ferreira and then Sewell. That was a massive chance for Lime Hall in that first half. The man is still unable to get either the shot on target or an accurate pass. He had options. Second half now, Kane again, trifling that one. Ferreira had to come up with a big save to his right. Yeah, that was a good hit. Really was. Mobile United fought and fought. And Lawrence weaving his way through. And the shot was magnificently blocked by Sewell, who was brave to stand his ground. The captain of Lime Hall. And then Edwards. Doing well as he headed towards the byline. Pulled it back. Henry should have scored. How did he miss that? Wide of the mark. O'Neill Henry. He would have buried himself in the aftermath of not burying that. And that was that. So having called the truce, these are the stats. Lime Hall with 11 shots, five of which are on target. Mobe United had nine shots on target from their 16. 12 fouls committed by Mobe United, five more than Lime Hall. Three yellow cards were shown in total. A couple of offsides against Lime Hall, one less uh, than Mobe United, who had nine corner kicks to one uh, for Lime Hall, and they edged out the possession as well. Montego Bay United at 51%. The man is so well. Your performance was quite good in this game, so much so that we made you the man of the match. Uh, sum up your performance for me. Um. A little bit disappointed in it, as you can all see. I think we got the glorious chance to, to complete our task today. However, it didn't went the way we wanted to, but I mean, our first game in the, in the JPL this season and come away with a point, uh, we can't be too hard on ourselves. And we just got to go back on the training pitch, me and the boys, put in some more work and try to be ready for the next game. Sounds confident and it's all good for you. All the best going forward. Thank you very much. So there we have it. The man is so well, was really good for Limehall, really good in that defensive third for them.
and we have here the Santos. What do you make of this? An, an opportunity miss or gracious for the point when you look at the chances created by Lime Hall? Yes, I mean, we create chances too. I think it was a balanced match. In the last 20 minutes, I think we were superior, uh, conceded some counters, and we're still having to work on the decision making in front. You see, many times when we had the chance to kill the game, our last pass is poor, our cross is poor, and so on. This is we have to go to the to the Bosch guard and uh, and uh, and work on it. Well, you sum it up nicely, coach, and a lot to work on. But knowing you, you'll get it done. All the best going forward. Thank you very much. Uh, there's the Santos. Really spoke a lot about it. I say the same thing to you just now. With a chance in that last part of the game, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to tell me it's an opportunity miss, not gracious for the point here. Well, well, that's obvious. I mean, that's clear for everyone to see. Everything worked according to the plan. Three substitutes combined just to tap in. Um, that would cap off a good defensive performance um, and give the fans a, a three points to start. But um, it wasn't to be. A lot of times we see new teams coming up and they have a really good opening game. The challenge for you is to keep this going, isn't it? Most definitely. And to, to have them understand that in the league, you have to concentrate for 90 plus minutes. That's the most important thing. You have to concentrate right through. And I think this was a good exercise in concentration today. We just need to build on this going forward. Well, a lot to look forward to and positive to take from this one. All the best, coach. All right, thank you.